A musical instrument consists of three basic parts. You have to have a generator, which introduces energy into the system in the form of some kind of an oscillation to make the system vibrate, oscillate. You have to have a resonator, which allows for the standing up of setting standing waves inside the resonator, inside the system, to be able to have standing waves with a specific frequencies that have a harmonic series. And you have to have a radiator, which allows the sound to get out of the instrument to the, to the room around it. For a brass instrument, the generator is the player's lips, which you squeeze together and blow air through to make them buzz. Maybe if you're talented enough, you might even be actually to, able to play a, a musical scale with just your lips alone. Perhaps not anything you would pay money to go listen to as a music performance, though. So to make that a bit easier, we use a mouthpiece, a little, usually some kind of a metal device that has a cup and an opening that opens up into a tube which attaches to the rest of the instrument. And this allows to have a little bit more control over the buzzing, the input to the system, the generator to produce the excitation, the oscillation. <laughs> In fact, this little mouthpiece gives us a huge variety of frequencies, a huge range of frequencies that we can introduce into the musical instrument. Now, that alone just is the input, the frequency content into the system, and we need a resonator then to actually take those input frequencies and construct standing waves out of them. For a brass instrument or a wind instrument, that standing wave is a pipe. Here I just have a length of tubing that I stole from the chemistry department at my school a few years ago. A length of tubing, the sound comes in one end, and when it travels through the pipe to the other end, it encounters a change. We In physics, we call it a change in impedance because the cross-sectional area of the pipe changes, and so the sound is reflected from the other end, and it bounces back and forth between the two ends in a format that will only allow certain lengths of waves or certain frequencies of vibration, oscillation to exist inside the pipe. The pipe length determines which frequencies of that infinitely re possible range of frequencies can actually set up standing waves inside the pipe. So if I take the hose and I attach my mouthpiece to it, again, I will just demonstrate that I can give a wide variety of ranges. And I attach that mouthpiece to the pipe. trying to do that smooth change, but it won't let me because this length of pipe will only allow certain frequencies to set up standing waves inside the pipe. And those certain frequencies have integer multiples of the lowest frequency setting up what's called a harmonic series. Now, this musical instrument is not very loud. In fact, when we do the calculations in the graduate courses that I teach at Penn State, we calculate and we find out that only about 2% of all the energy that I put in, only about 2% of that energy actually gets out this small opening pipe, which means that this is a rather inefficient radiator of sound, and it doesn't really sound all that interesting, beautiful to listen to also. So we need something that still has the ability to make the sounds reflect back and create a standing wave, but that will allow some of the sound to get out the end. We call this an impedance matching device to gradually change from a very small impedance here to a much the different impedance on the outside. And so that usually is created by a bell, and I'm just going to take an oil funnel and attach it to the end of my pipe here. So let's see if I can do this with, with and without the pipe, the, the bell, to just to give the idea of what the difference in the sound is. A little bit louder, a little bit more musical. So 
that's just a simple musical instrument, but really that's all something like a trumpet is. A trumpet is just a little bit more uh, carefully designed mouthpiece, a long pipe that creates the standing waves, and then a flared bell that does the impedance matching to let the sound out a bit more effectively. <laughs> But that's the basic idea, the generator, the resonator, and the radiator.